Okay. Thank you so much for coming on. You're freaking awesome. So many people were asking about you because you're just the freaking tits, you know? Okay. Did you say, did you say TTs? Yeah, I did. I? Yeah, I did. I? Uh, yeah, I couldn't even repeat that because it's recorded. <laughs> you're so cute. Listen, I've, I've heard you say worse, okay? The, 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 the T word is, is not, you know, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. That's funny. Okay, right, so, so we're gonna get this part. Oh, you get it. Go ahead. You do your thing. Well, I was just gonna, literally, I was just gonna tell you just to like take take over. I mean, world domination yeah. take over. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm just gonna do my thing. Then I'm excited, guys. What's going on? Drop a one if you're excited. Hop off if you're not. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, I am fired up. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Ashley Mayfield. I'm going to like channel and get serious now. So I guess, uh, obviously Emily has sent over some questions and, uh, we're just going to, uh, you know, I'm going to share my story with you and then we're going to take it from there. So as I am talking, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat and, uh, you know, we'll just kind of rock and roll. Um, so my name is Ashley Mayfield. I am an ambassador diamond. Feels so cool to say that. Um, I've been in the business. It'll be three years this month. I joined May 24th, 2016. And I joined after stalking my enroller for 18 months. I was so stubborn. I would not like a picture. I would not double tap. Okay. And, uh, finally got to the point after so long uh, my husband is ordained he was a pastor on staff and I was a retail manager and we were both just square pegs and round holes we were both very miserable with where we were at and um, you know we wanted more I was so tired of living how many of you guys are tired of living check to check can you drop a two in the chat okay uh, we are just so tired of living you know for the four or five thousand dollar income tax check that you get once a year because we got two kiddos thank you for your kiddos right okay and um, and I just wanted more, you guys. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Overworked, underpaid, salary, working 50 to 60 hours a week, being paid 40. I knew what I was signing up for when I did retail management. I knew it was nights, weekends, and holidays, but I had no idea how much it would take me away from my kids. And so the fact that I watched my enroller for so long, and I had to get to a point where I suffered. How many of y'all get that? Like some of y'all haven't suffered long enough, okay? And uh, I had to get to a point where I just suffered and I was watching and watching and watching and finally, um, I just knew I needed to take the leap and I actually joined as a customer in 48 hours, paid the $50 fee um, in order to upgrade to be a distributor and I cried my first seven days. Just cried. Um, I'm a total red blue and so I'm very high energy. I have lots of emotions. Um, but I was very much out of control emotionally whenever I first joined. I was very broken. I lacked confidence. I lacked the ability to cast vision for myself. And um, I just believed in the worst. I believed that I was unworthy. I believed that people robbed me of success. I had a victim mindset very much. And um, I just thought so low of, of myself. So when you guys see me, and you see me on Facebook Live, or you see me at an event, or you just see me on my social media, you see what I want you to see, okay? And so I really wanna make that clear that there is nothing greater on the inside of me that's not on the inside of you. I do not have any super secret scripts that you don't have. I don't have any super secret way to lure people in like you, you don't have. There is nothing different uh, about me than you. Some of you, I might just have better skills. Some of you, I might just have more time then. Uh, some of you, I might just have failed more than you have failed. That's literally it. So um, I had no idea what I wanted when I joined. I looked my husband dead in the face. I said, I'll make two to $300. I wouldn't make 500, but I knew what I wanted, which is so weird. Um, I had watched my enroller go on the It Works cruise the year before, and uh, they were giving away the cruise again. And I had never been on a cruise, y'all, okay? Uh, we, you know, obviously we were like, uh, not not poor poor, but we were making good money, but we were living very stupid with our money and we were drowning in debt massively. And so I just knew like I wanted to get on this cruise so bad. And to me, the cruise, like I identified my ability to succeed with getting on this cruise. So that's all I focused on. I did whatever I had to do. And my enroller was like, if you go Ruby, like because I joined May 24th, if you go Ruby by July, I didn't even know what Ruby was. She's like, you're gonna get on the cruise, guaranteed. And so I went Ruby by July. And then the next month I got Jason Ruby and then I sat there for seven to nine months because I had literally had no idea what I wanted. 
like none at all. And, um, and it took a lot. I almost quit that December for the entire month, not like a day, not a week, like the entire month. <laughs> it was probably one of the toughest months of my life. And what I didn't realize is God was actually like making a shift on the inside of me. Um, it wasn't the business, but how many of us know we like take our stuff out on the business. Right. And, um, I woke up in January. I said that I had the fastest growing team. I did a Facebook live. I lied right through my teeth and something changed on the inside of me. I started doing self-development. I went to conference within six weeks. I went from 250 to $2,000, uh, four months later. Well, from five in five months, I went from Ruby to double diamond. And then, um, no one still knew who I was. We started paying off our debt. Um, people started hearing who I was last year because I got a chance to connect with Cami at a one team, one mission, and she shouted me out. And then I went from double, triple prez last year and then just went ambassador um, March 31st, which was super cool because on March 31st, a year ago, I was being paid as a double diamond. And so in one year, I went from double to ambassador. And um, there's real power in this, you guys. I'm not, I'm not better than you. I don't have any super secret gift that you can't attain or learn. Um, but I failed a lot in my first year and a half. I learned a lot that a lot of people did not see because you guys saw me when I was on the upswing, right? So um, so that's me in a nutshell. I love what I do. Now I'm building my 2.0. We have this phenomenal team and uh, just trying to get better every day. Killing it out here though. I love that. Wow, I didn't really know your story like in depth really. That's so awesome. You freaking rock. Congrats again. Thank you. Congrats to you. <laughs> um, okay, so... Um, I know I sent you some questions. I know you said too, if you guys have anything else, just let us know. But um, one of the main, 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 main things that most people were asking was about your leadership and your growth like with your team. And ob obviously yourself, because you got to grow yourself in order to grow your team. Right. Um, but, you know, being that leader and developing yourself, but also developing your team as well. Definitely. So, um, and I've taught this, um, uh, I think I have either on a Facebook live or on my podcast. I don't remember, but, um, you know, a lot of what we all want is duplication, right? Drop a three in the chat if you want duplication. I just want my freaking team to work. I just want my team to show up. I want them just to like breathe or maybe just like send me a smiley face back instead of ghosting me. Right. <laughs> and, uh, what we don't realize though, I, I feel like I have found the three entities that really make this business successful or this industry successful. Number one is enrolling and recruiting. You have to know how to enroll and recruit. Okay. That's like the premise of what we do. You have to figure it out. You have to teach yourself. You have to do whatever it takes. You got to figure out how to enroll and recruit. And then from there, you have to start developing yourself as a leader. Okay. So you've recruited a couple team members. You have to figure out how to be a leader. Um, that means you have to start doing self-development. That means you have to get uncomfortable. That means you actually have to hold someone's hand. You have to care about the people that joined you, right? You got to pay attention when you're on Zooms. Oh, uh, you know, you got to do these things, right? You got to be a leader. You got to take notes, you guys. It's better to trust your short pencil than your long-term memory, right? You guys should be taking notes. Um, so you have to develop yourself as a leader. If you don't develop yourself as a leader, you will not equal duplication. You will not get duplication. Okay. And I think a lot of us, we, we enroll and recruit and we want to skip over the leadership part. And then we're like, Oh, well I got someone. So I need them to do what I do now. And we immediately rush because we're so focused on what we want and we're not really developing ourselves as leaders. And you have an inability to leave, lead others unless you really know how to lead yourself. Um, and I think a lot of us operate our business that way, right? Like how many of you will be honest and drop a four in the chat and say like, you feel like you suck as a leader or you feel like you could improve or you feel like you could grow or you feel like, I don't know, like you don't know what you're doing. Okay. There's a lot of us, right? Oftentimes that's a reflection of your inability to lead yourself. It's a reflection of your inability to be disciplined. It's a reflection of your inability to cast vision for yourself. It's a reflection of your inability to uh, make sure that you stay committed to do the thing that you said you would do, right? And so if you are not doing that for yourself, it is ludicrous for you to think that you could do that for other people. So when it comes to leading your team, first off, 
I mean, there's so many different things of leadership, but I think the number one thing about leadership really is operating with a level of humility. Now, I actually don't like the word humble. I think it's a terrible word, <laughs> but um, total dominant red phrase right there, right? But I do believe in operating with humility because it's usually when people come to the table and they're, oh, I don't need to go to that Zoom. Oh, I don't need to do self-development. Oh, that's bull crap. Hanging up a sign that says, uh, you know, I have a sign sitting here that says $50,000 because I want to check $50,000. Oh, you know, that's dumb. I'm not going to look at a sign every day. I'm not going to tell myself affirmations and I'm not going to make a dream board. Like that's dumb, right? And um, so when you don't have humility, when you lack humility, you're going to think you don't need to learn. And when you think that you know it all, well, that's never going to duplicate. So what I would love to do is do a little test here. I want to know what, um, what check would you guys like? I've got a check that says $50,000. Okay. I haven't hit that yet. That'd be amazing. I've hit, I've exceeded that with me and my husband's checks, but I'd like to hit this in my check. So I'd love to know what, um, cause my husband's presidential if I did not say that. And, um, I'd love to know what check would you guys like? What check? What's the amount that you guys want? What are you focused on? What do you... You know, ten thousand dollars. Woohoo! Twenty thousand. I love that. Twenty thousand. Ten thousand. Eight thousand. Forty-two. Twelve. Ten. Ah, oh, that's a lot. Three. All right. Twenty thousand. Eight hundred. Seventy-nine. Thirty-four cents. <laughs> Very specific. Twenty-five thousand. Fifteen thousand. Twenty-six thousand. Cool. 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 I love that. I'm curious how there's like 160 people on and there's like 30 people. I'm just curious why half of you are even on here right now. Um, if you're just here to appease Emily or because you're not here to feed my ego, because I'd rather have 20 people who are actually going to listen to what I say and want to implement it. Um, cool. I love all this stuff. Awesome job, guys. I love those goals. Now I want every single one of you um, to be, don't be here because I'm a rock star. You need to be here because you're a rock star. Um, so I want every single one of you that just commented, um, go ahead and post in the chat how many books you finished in the last 90 days. And I want someone to be honest. Zero. Five, one, two, zero, five. Hmm. I'm working on more. Zero, zero. Fifteen. Well, all people are just so bluntly honest. Yeah. It's awesome. I, I, I love it. I, I appreciate you guys' honesty. I really do. You see how it's kind of crazy, though, that you think you're entitled to a $2,000 check, a $5,000, a $10,000 check, and you're not willing to grow your brain? It's kind of crazy, right? That's kind of arrogant, right, when you think about it? I mean, y'all got to be honest. Yes or yes. Right. It's a level of entitlement that you think I saw two people hopped off. They couldn't handle it. Sorry, Emily. Um, <laughs> I'm, show, I'm showing up as me though. Um, you know, cause I'm, I'm not here to make you guys like me. I don't need an ego trip. I'm here to help you guys be better humans. You guys want to wave at me. If you want to know how to go ambassador, wave at me. If you want to know how to make money, wave at me. If you actually want life change, then you should be taking notes because otherwise you're wasting your own time. You guys can hear any other speaker speak. You know what I mean? But the reality is, is if you want a $5,000 check, but you're not willing to grow your brain, you want a $10,000 check, but you're not willing to grow your brain, there's a disconnect there. You feel like you're entitled to something staying the same way that you are today. And if that was the reality, you'd already have it, right? You wouldn't have to change anything. But the fact of the matter is that you do have to change something. So when we talk about leadership, when we talk about leading from the front, when we talk about wanting to dominate, because I'm not here, I'm trying to dominate y'all, okay? I want to be better than y'all. Like, listen, and I hope you guys want to be better than me. We should always want to be better, right? There's always a what's next. And this isn't about greed. This isn't about, because I know someone, I'm like, oh, that's so greedy. Okay, well, I believe in Jesus Christ and I believe my husband is ordained and I believe that God has called us to prosper. I believe there is nothing that I can't do. It's me that's holding me back. He's died, he's given me all the power, but it's my job to tap into it. It's my job to be the best Ashley Mayfield I could possibly be. It's your, it's your responsibility to be the best you you could be. How are you going to do that if you're not growing your brain? How are you going to do that? Because, you know, self-development is not an, it, it's not an it works thing. But it is a tangible way to make sure that you're growing in your life. 
I am a better wife, I am a better mom, I am a better friend, and I am a better business owner when I am taking my mind forward, when I am choosing to become the best version of me. Because what you don't understand in leadership is it is not about you. There are moments I make decisions as a leader for my tribe that screw me over. There are moments I am teaching my team, this is how you need to promote, and you're going to take money from me, right? We're trying to make people better. And so and when you have a mindset that you are personally growing, that you are personally striving for more, I'm okay with telling uh, people, no, I need you to pop diamond. I need you to take that $80 from me. I need you to do that because it's going to change your life. And I'm not just going to be like, oh, let me not, let me not uh, encourage her to go diamond because she's going to take money from me. No, because I want to have an abundance mindset. But when you are growing in your leadership and when you're growing in your mindset, you are going to realize that it's not always about you. And you might have to have those, um, you know, those short losses for the long-term gain. I'm in this for the long-term gain. I'm in this for down the road. I'm not just going to throw in the towel because I have a bad month. I see the long-term. I see Black Diamond, y'all. I didn't see it three months ago, but something clicked six weeks ago and I was laying in bed and I was like, I got it. I see it. I'm good. I don't know when, and I don't really know how, but I see it's made sense in my brain now. And so you have to grow as a leader. When you want that duplication, I don't even know if I'm nailing what you asked, Emily, sorry. But when you, you're like, how do you lead your team? Lead yourself. <laughs> but guys, you have to understand that like, for me, people ask me all the time, how do you lead your team? I've read books. I've listened to podcasts. Uh, how do you do your Facebook lives? Do you guys think I come up with everything I talk about on Facebook live? Girl, you crazy. <laughs> you crazy. You giving me way too much credit, baby. I am a bear of very little brain. Okay. <laughs> like I am not that smart. I am not that creative and I am not that talented to sit down and to map all this stuff out. But I do regurgitate things that I've read, learned and implemented. And I put the Ashley Mayfield spin on it. That's basically it. So if you want to know how to lead other people, lead yourself. Mm -hmm. You, you answered it. You got it right there. That was perfect. <laughs> okay. Um, can you, do you mind going a little more into this, but a little more in depth kind of as far as like your, your training, you don't have to go crazy. Um, <clears throat> but maybe as far as like your, the growth with your training with, People. I know you're really big into color personality, so I'm assuming that that's huge with it. But do you mind just giving maybe some like, you know, tips and tricks that you personally love that maybe are a little unique that you think make like a huge difference as far as training people and helping grow them and whatnot? Definitely. I think the biggest thing that you have to do is meet people right where they're at. So we do make everyone take a color personality test. Um, you can find it on Google. Um, I think there's like five different ones that you could do, but we make everyone do that. And that's something that I do feel like I am extremely confident. I feel like there are very few people in the company that implement the color personality at the extent that we do. It's something I've been teaching myself since August of 2017. Um, and that is one thing that has changed my business. So it's almost like two years we've been doing this. Um, but it came from, that was when I went from uh, uh, March to July and I went from Ruby to double so fast and I bulldozed over and I really felt like my business was going to crumble. And uh, cause I, I unintentionally bulldozed over my team. I didn't realize I was doing it, but I had this like epiphany, like Jesus epiphany. And um, I turned to the color personality and I realized like, wow, I'm really, really red. And I kind of have to make sure that I don't do that to new people, right? Like how many of us, we get a new distributor and maybe you're just not good at recruit. I mean, it's, this doesn't, this has nothing to do with my color, but maybe you're not the best at recruiting. And so you only get, you've only gotten one distributor, but then you like bear hugged them and you like suffocated them and then they quit on you or Maybe you're really good at recruiting and you expect people to get it like you get it. And so then you're just blowing through recruits and you're like, well, my recruits suck. No, you suck. <laughs> right. And so um, the color personality has really helped me as a human be able to identify uh, different people have different needs. But I think for me, the great, the biggest thing that I do is 
anytime I enroll someone, I always want to connect with them on Zoom, and I really just want to get to know them. I think it's really easy for us just to want to shove tasks down people's throats and say, you know, oh my gosh, you need to do this, da 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 da, da. and we we assume people are excited. We assume people are ready to run. We assume people are happy, and you have to remember what it felt like. And I don't care how ready you were, nine times out of 10, there was a little bit of fear, doubt, or uncomfortableness, nervousness, right? And I think we just have to meet people where there are and so where they are. So I try to, um, oh, that would, Jason, that would take me like 10 years. Um, <laughs> um, I just taught myself the colors. There's no like rhyme or reason. I literally sat there. I read the results over and over and over. And when I, after like three days of doing it, I'm telling you, I spent hours like looking at this stuff. And when I walked out of my office, my husband started speaking to me and I was like, oh my God, he's a red green. And like, I just knew like my oldest daughter, I was like, oh my God, this explains why. Like my youngest daughter, she's six. I'm telling you like. If you could throw kids against the wall, that she might be one that you do this to. Dominant red, total dominant red. She's a total mini mutant of me and my husband. She is, she's this princess. She's very direct, very demanding. If I say no, she'll go ask her father, like, oh, you just want to break her in half, right? But so me, Jason, and my youngest are all reds, but my oldest is a yellow. And reds and yellows are opposites. And so I realized why so many times I felt like a failure as a parent. So many times Jocelyn would come crying and she's like, I just don't feel like I fit into the family. Oh my God. Like that's hurtful as a mom, right? Like you're like, I'm failing my baby. And it's no, it's because three of us are all freaking self-centered, direct, self-focused mutants, right? Like unicorns. And my daughter's over here and she just puts other people first and she cares about the environment. She cares about recycling and she wants to, you know, honor people and write. She wants to make her own Valentine's day cards and classes. And we're like, Oh my God, buy them. It's two 99 at Walgreens and save some time. Like she's so thoughtful and caring and tenderhearted. And so I think I, when I walked out of my office that day, I discovered it in my family and I was just like, wow, like if I could do that with my family and I could learn how to, change the way I talk to, like, I have to treat Allison different than Jocelyn now, right? And so um, I just figured, what if I implement this with my team? And how would, how would that help me be effective in my leadership? And so, um, um, you know what? You're probably a yellow blue, because blues are actually the emotional ones. Um, yellows are very tender hearted, but blues are definitely emotional. We are the drama queens, okay? And uh, we're the emotional roller coasters. Um, but what I will say is that, you know, no matter what you do, you don't have to understand the color personalities like I do. It's not about, you don't have to become Ashley Mayfield. I think what's important that you have to find is you have to connect with your new distributor. You have to connect with them and you got to know why they're here. You have to know their story and stop assuming that their story is your story and stop assuming their journey is your journey and stop looking at them as a box. Stop looking at them as one more DT to get to diamond, like that's cool and all. And I'm just as much for that when it comes to Ashley Mayfield. When I have my Ashley Mayfield hat on, I can think whatever the heck I want, right? That's my, that's my business. But when I'm coming to my tribe, when I want the tribe to succeed, I put my leader hat on. And it's not about me, oh my gosh, I need this person to run so I can hit X, Y, Z. It's, I'm literally giving my undivided attention to this person. And it's, what do you want? What, what amount would you like to make in the next 30 days? Two to $300. Awesome. I know exactly how to help you do that. We're going to help you recruit one or two distributors and we're going to help you. We're going to help you launch yourself. We're going to help you recruit one or two people and we're going to help them launch. That's probably going to be about $300 for you, right? 200 to $300 right there. And so I think just being able to meet people where they're at and be ready for them. So how many of you right now be dead honest, put yes or no in the chat. If you had 15 people join you tomorrow. Do you feel like you're ready to handle them? Yes or no? 15, all 15. You're ready to launch them. You're ready to get them going. You're ready to get the, the whatever it takes. A lot of no's. A lot of no's. I'm not saying you're ready. I'm saying you got a go-to written out plan. You know exactly what to do. Not like, oh, I feel like I'm ready. I think I'm ready. <laughs> you know what I mean? So maybe figure that part out. What would you do? What would you do? You don't have to get ready if you stay ready. You know what I'm saying? So what would you do? If you had three people, if Mark dropped a 50% off in two weeks, and I don't know anything, but if he, what would you do? 
What would you do? Do you have an expectation? Oh, the next time there's promotion, I'm signing 10 DTs, okay? Then all of a sudden you have 10 DTs. What are you going to do with them? If you build it, they will come, right? You got to be ready for this stuff. So um, I would definitely say find what works for you. But for me, connecting with people face-to-face -face has been so powerful. 15 minutes, y'all. Don't spend an hour. Like, don't drain people. But just 15, 20 minutes, I want to connect with you one-on-one. -on -one. I'm so excited. Like, I used to have to keep a journal just like a um, – I don't think I have one on me anymore over there somewhere just like a 99 cent composition notebook from Walgreens or something you know just like a little ghetto notebook and I just used to keep my distributors names because I'm not a yellow I don't put other people first it's very difficult it's my third color I'm, I'm like negative 37 percent green but I'm just not very thoughtful I don't um I don't really put a lot of other people first. It's very, I have to be very intentional with that side of me. And I wish that I was better at that. I always wished I was that yellow personality that everyone just loved. And I'm not, I'm not the person that when you are down and out and you need a word of encouragement, like I'm not the person you want to come to, but when your back's against the wall and you want someone in your face to make you rise up, you better freaking call me. Like that's the person I am. I will make you go left or I will make you go right. I will make you rise or I'll make you quit. Like that's, that's my gift I bring to the table. I bring that fire in your belly and you're going to get it or you're not. And it's not for everybody. And I'm fine with that. But because that's my gift, I have to acknowledge that not everybody receives that gift. There's some of you on here that probably already, you've already predetermined you don't like me because you think I'm obnoxious or you think I'm too much or I'm too abrasive. And I'm okay with that. I have had to teach myself to be okay with who I am and with my gift because that's my superpower. And I always wished I was the other person, but I'm grateful for what I have. But I still have to remember Again, when I'm Ashley Mayfield, when I'm coming on the Zoom, I can be as abrasive because I'm not here to be your friend. I am here to, and I appreciate the acknowledgement and the recognition and the, woo, Ashley, you're amazing. Like that feeds my red, don't get me wrong. But I'm not here to make, make you be my friend. I am here to help you make money and to wake you up to say you don't have tomorrow. You don't have tomorrow. You have to do what you got to do today. But when I'm being a leader, not everybody needs that. Right. And so I got to connect with those new people. And it's important I do it face to face because they need to feel my heart and they need to know that I genuinely care about them because you're not going to join me and then say, I didn't message you or say, if anything, anyone like will say, you know, uh, like she cared too much about my goals or she messaged me too much or she wanted it more than me. Like that's what people would say about me. You know what I mean? So um, I guess my biggest tip would just be connect with your people connect with them. Like it shocks me how many people have launched new distributors and they've never once gotten on zoom with them for 15 minutes and just ask them about their life, you know, and that goes a really, really long way. Love it. Phenomenal. Woo. That was really good. That was good. Okay. <laughs> Deep breath. All right. Um, I feel like I double asked you a question, so I'm just going to skip that. Okay, throughout, I know you kind of explained your story and your transition and whatnot, but can you share maybe your, your biggest aha moment or like a few of them and I'm assuming it's self-development, which you've been, <laughs> but, um, I don't know, you know, we all go through, we all go through different things you know we go through hardships to go through setbacks um can you share a few or like your biggest aha moment ever um so i'm sure some people are kind of going through that same thing and it was just a question that everyone was asking too definitely um self-development and i know that no matter how many times i say it most most of you a majority of you are going to get off here and you're not going to change it you're not going to start doing self-development um because it's not a priority to you um but there are no secrets if you want to know what got me to the top it is self-development it is making sure that i am the best that i'm always challenging myself that i've never feel i've never feel that i've arrived you know and um success you guys takes so many people out success makes people lazy um and I've just had to, I've had to get myself to a point where, you know, I am constant, I'm continuously dreaming. Um, so self-development has been huge, 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 huge. I just can't, I can't, it's, it's who I am. The moment I stop doing self-development, I'll die. I'm convinced, like I'll just die. Um, so other than that, I think the biggest aha, one of the biggest aha moments for me was when we went debt-free 
Um, we paid off $63,801.99. We did that all in six months while I was a double diamond. All while I was double diamond. $63,801.99 in six months. Okay. And, um, and it transformed my life because for the first time, me and my husband had the exact same vision and we're both very driven people and we had identical vision and it allowed me to see the magnitude of uh, both of us being aligned with the same vision and being in that one accord. And it transformed. By the time I started paying off debt, my checks were about three to 4,000. By the time we ended paying off debt, they were between 12 and 15,000 as a double diamond. Okay. And uh, I believe there's so much in that. I believe that was just God honoring us, or not honoring. Oh my God, but God blessing us. Like there's all these, there's more things in that, but the mindset of what it did of having this unified gazelle like intensity focus where when I was weak, he wanted to spend money when he wanted to spend money, I was strong. And the way that that impacted my business is like we paid off all of our debt in six months. And then we, as we were rounding third and coming home, because we anticipated it would have taken 12 months, but God did it in six. And so as we were about to, like we knew in March, okay, uh, April, we're going to be paying it off. When we get paid in April, it's going to get paid. It's going to get paid. And so when we knew that we had to say, what's next? And Jason was like, let's see how quick we can put $25,000 in our savings account. And we did that in two months. We did that in April and May, 25,000 in our savings account. And that, how quickly we said what's next started something on the inside of me. And I've taught this a couple different times, but what I realized is, um, have you guys ever played a uh, rock, paper, scissors? Like, hello, who hasn't played that? Okay. If you haven't played that, hop off. We can't even be friends. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I didn't grow up in church, y'all. Okay. Jesus, when Jesus left the 99, you're welcome. They were written about me. Okay. And so in, uh, in, uh, I didn't grow up in church, but in like, when I started going, it was like, you know, I was in high school or late middle school. And in youth group, they played Gorilla Man and Gun, If You Tie, You Die. Anybody heard of that? Just drop like, I don't know, yes in there, okay? Uh, Gorilla Man and Gun, You Tie, You Die. And so, um, you know, it was basically like rock, paper, scissor, but if you get the, if you tie, you're both out, okay? And so I kind of took that, if you tie, you die, into my mindset. And so like in life, we have these, cause I got in it, you know, and so all this ties together, just follow me. So we pay off our debt. We say, what's next? We, right before we paid off our debt, we're like, what's next? What's next? Cause we want to keep momentum. You never want to stop momentum. And then it was like $25,000 to the bank account. And then it was like, what's next? What's next? And what I realized is in my first year, I got to Ruby and then I stopped. Remember what I told you? All I wanted to do was get on that cruise. Side note. I got on the cruise, but all I want to do is get on that cruise. And I knew I had to go Ruby. And so often in life, we have these dreams, we have these goals, we have these aspirations, these desires, and then we have our work ethic and we're like, and right here, we should be asking ourselves what's next. And we raise the bar and we don't. And what do we do? We match. And guess what happens when you tie? You die. How many of you right now will admit, will you drop a five in the chat? And will you admit that you hit the rank and then you lost momentum? You hit a goal and then you stopped. It's because you tied and you died. And so one of the most powerful things that because of it works, we were able to go debt free. And because we went debt free, I have always learned to ask myself, what's next? What's next? What's next? All right, we're getting ready to nail this goal. It's April 20th or May 20th. I know I'm going to hit this goal by the end of the month. What's next? I'm constantly thinking next. Right now, most of you are thinking it's May 8th. How am I going to end the month? Or you're like, I need to turn on. <laughs> you're waiting to turn on for the month, right? I'm already planning in my head, how are we going to maintain sales November and December? I am already thinking what's up. You guys, May is already over. You're fooling yourself. May is over already. We're in June now, right? I'm always one step ahead. I'm always saying what's next, what's next, what's next. I, and, and that comes at a cost. That comes at a cost of me opening a check today and it being astronomical. And it made me very emotional because it's not enough. Because I'm not changing enough lives because I'm not making a big enough impact as I want because 
it's not what I wanted. And so, you know, when you ask you, when you start asking yourself what's next, it comes at a price. It comes at a price of holding yourself to a standard of, uh, you know, I don't know. There's moments where I get tunnel vision. I don't want to be friends with nobody. I'm got my head down. I want to do what I got to do. I want to change lives. I want to make an impact. Like I'm here, uh, not for the hustle and grind, because I love my sleep, y'all. Okay, all this like you gotta wake up at five a.m. to be successful. That's for the mother trucking birds. I said trucking. I don't cuss. Okay, but that's for the birds. Like legit the birds. All right. I got to ambassador without waking up at five a.m. If some if if Emily tells you wake up at five a.m., y'all listen to your leader. Okay, I'm just telling you, I didn't have to wake up at five a.m. Okay, but guess what? Sometimes I go to bed at two a.m. Sometimes I go to bed at three a.m. So, you know, for me, I have had to ask myself what's next. So again, like when I have that goal and I'm meeting it, I raise the bar and then I run through and then I raise the bar and then I run through and then I raise the bar. and I run through. So it's, it's this constant thing of growth. It's this constant. And listen, here's the deal. You're never going to be able to do this because you're not growing your mind. And so you're never going to have a what's next because you don't know what's next because you're not taking your mindset there. You see how all this stuff aligns like a beautiful little spider web. And so none of it matters if you're not growing yourself because the reality is, is you can attain anything. You can attain ambassador. You can attain double ambassador. You can attain diamond, double, triple. You can attain ruby. There's something 10 times more powerful about sustaining something though. Y'all hear what I'm saying? This isn't about reaching a rank in your check dropping. This is about making sure you have what it takes to not only sustain the mountain, but then you start climbing another one. So that's probably one of the biggest ahas that I have ever had. It has changed my life. It's changed my mindset. It's changed my leadership. And, um, and I got paid a lot of money the moment I figured that out. Always say what's next. Don't tie and die. Love that. I'm so happy I asked you that question. That was amazing. That blew my mind. Okay. Um, I'm going to, ask this one last question and just kind of fill it up and go. But again, if you guys have anything, now's the time. Can you, can you kind of just go over what your day is like? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I'll be honest with you. That's a really tricky question. And the only reason I'm going to say that is because I'm a psycho and uh, I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, I mean, I can tell you what my day is right now, you guys, but if you're not like, I'm on the level where my day has evolved to be like this. Okay. Um, so some staple things that I can tell you is I do my best to get up between nine and 10 AM. Um, I don't, I don't really set an alarm. Um, uh, my ideal day as I do set an alarm, but I really do like my sleep. Most nights I am up until one or 3 AM. Um, but every morning I do my best not to fiddle on my phone. My husband's told me for over a year to don't sleep with my phone next to me. And I just don't take instruction very well from other humans. And so if you tell me to do something, I'm probably going to do the opposite because I'm immature and I've got some things I'm still working through guys. Okay. And so, uh, what's so funny is, uh, there was a voice memo and I was like, I got an idea from someone telling me something. And Jason's like, I was going to actually just tell you that. And I'm glad I didn't. Cause if I'd have told you, you wouldn't have done it. But since you came up with the idea, I was like, you know me so well after 11 years of marriage. So I have some immaturities I have to work through. So anyways, let's just go back. So, um, so I fiddle with my phone in the morning like I shouldn't, but I just get ready for my day. I get ready for my day. I've been doing this for about six months now. It's changed my world. And I know that sounds really stupid to some of you, but I make sure I'm doing my self-development. I'm listening in the shower. I'm listening when I put makeup on. I only wash my hair on Mondays. I didn't wash my hair two days ago, so I don't know when I'll wash my hair again. Um, but I have purple hair. I can't wash it every day. Um, but I've got like a system of, how, oh, it's because I got my hair done on Friday. That's why. So I have a system of how long I go without like washing my hair and how I wear my hair certain days. Like, I don't know. I'm a creature of habit, I guess. Um, but I'm getting myself ready. I'm making sure I'm putting clothes on. Okay. I'm making sure I put my makeup on. I am ready because I found myself making excuses not to take selfies, not to have pictures taken of me, not to get on video, not to get on camera, not to do Facebook lives. Cause I wasn't ready. Right. I, if Jason said, Oh, can you go grab the kids from school? Oh, I can't, I'm not ready. I'm not put together. Okay. And I am a second blue. So my appearance matters to me. Um, 
And, uh, you know, I just had to eliminate that excuse. So every morning is my personal development time. I'm doing personal development all throughout my day. I'm not even lie about that, but it's like my bread and butter. It's my non-negotiable. I'm listening to a podcast or I'm listening to, um, uh, uh, a book or something. And while I'm getting ready and I give myself just like an hour to breathe. Now that does look like me answering some messages here and there because there's some information I have to get out or whatever. And then I don't do anything. I don't have any meetings before 11 AM because I realized I'm not responsible to show up before 11 AM. And if I start, I was doing meetings at like nine and nine 30. Yeah. Those people got screwed. Okay. <laughs> like <laughs> not happening. And, um, so then I just became like Larry loser of a leader, right? Because I wasn't showing up for my people. And so I was like, okay, no meetings before 11. I make sure I'm at least ready by 10 30. That's my goal is to be ready at least by 10 30 every day. That way I have 30 minutes to walk into my office. I make sure I just say good morning to my husband. Most times I'd rather avoid him because I'm really still not awake yet. I'm not a morning person. And so like my husband will not step foot. He knows like don't step foot in that bathroom. If you hear my music or you hear my podcast or you hear whatever. And when I say music, like once a week, I'll listen to worship music because I feel like I'm in the mood. Okay. I'm really like, you know, those people that are like, the Bible's my favorite book. Okay, I get we try to be holy rollers. Listen, I'm a Christian too, but you need to be reading some, some business stuff that's going to grow your mind. Yes, the Bible has some phenomenal principles. You got to get some practical application business stuff, okay? So, um, but my husband knows not to come in. So I have 30, I mean, you really, I'm giving you very deep, much details, Emily. So I have 30 minutes where I'm trying to get myself together to be a human, to put my yellow face on, tell myself that I love my tribe, tell myself that I love people and that humans are fantastic. And you don't just bulldoze over humans and, you know, herd them like cats. Um, usually doing meetings throughout my morning meetings with people that are home or my higher level people. Obviously I do my non-negotiables. Um, you know, I've done a whole podcast on this, um, uh, of non-negotiables. Uh, for instance, I'm not going to go into depth. You can look at the podcast on that, but if you only have an hour a day, you should spend 20 minutes on self-development, 20 minutes on moving your business forward and 20 minutes talking to your team. That's how I'm convinced you should do it. Um, so I'm making sure I'm moving my business forward. I'm very active on my social media. I run my business. I used to say like 98.5 because I've recruited one person face to face. Y'all, I run my business solely on social media. I don't want to talk to you. I'm not a quality time person. When someone says, what do you do for a living? My immediate answer is I could tell you, but I have to text you. Can I text you? <laughs> like, I don't want to talk to you. Okay. Like I'm so awkward face to face. And I know you're like, I don't believe you. You do amazing. Blah, blah. No, I, I get very uncomfortable when people ask me face to face what I do. I carry a lot of shame from my mom making fun of me growing up. And, uh, you know, that's just life. I'm sure you guys have mommy or daddy issues too. I'm not the only one. So, um, in there, my husband's telling me to eat because I will not eat because I get so tunnel vision. Cause I'm such a red. I'm usually in my office for no joke, 10 to 12 hours hours a day off and on. Um, sometimes I'm a terrible mom and I don't play with my kids and other times I'm like, Hey, let's just go walk around target and, you know, look at toys and I'm probably going to buy you something. Um, because I'm a workaholic and sometimes I buy my kids toys so that they think they love me because that's passed down from my parents. All right. I'm not telling you guys to do this. You asked a question. I'm being dead honest with you guys about my life. Um, I, uh, at, uh, from 1130 to 12 every day, uh, I sit down and drink my keto coffee while my husband eats his lunch. We have 30 minutes of uninterrupted time. And this just started three weeks ago because we got in a really bad argument where I basically, uh, discovered my husband did not tell us to tell me this. I discovered I'm a really sucky wife and I go throughout like weeks without ever asking my husband how he's doing or putting my phone down when he's talking to me. And so I basically begged him, I need you to help me. Cause like, I obviously don't want my marriage to fall apart. I was like, I need you to pull me away from the business. I'm obsessed. Okay. I was raised on Mario. You guys, that's not an exaggeration. I like to level up. I like to be the best. I like to save the princess as many times as I can. And, um, so he said, okay, uh, every day, Monday through Thursday, we're going to have 1130 to 12 uninterrupted. And then we spend Fridays together. So I don't do any meetings on Fridays. I don't do any meetings on Saturdays and I don't do any meetings on Sundays until 6 PM. So I really hump it Mondays through Thursdays. Um, and that's it. Like I do my best to at least see my kids, talk to them. Um, very rarely will I sit down and eat dinner as a family. Um, uh, I try to be very intentional with each of my kids throughout the week. And then I'm just doing meetings like this. I'm doing coaching calls or I'm launching new distributors. 
Um, but I am a dominant red through and through and I'm grateful I'm married to a red. And so everyone in my family, we are not quality time people in our family. So, um, that is one thing we really have going for us, even though my youngest or my oldest is a yellow, she's a yellow green. So she's very brainy and she, uh, extremely intelligent, extremely like high IQ gifted. Um, and she just likes to be independent. You know, she's not like, let me be all in the crowd. Um, my youngest daughter is probably the neediest out of all of us. She usually just wants us to do whatever she wants to do. But me and my husband, were not really quality time people. And so that 30 minute uninterrupted time for us, like that's enough in our marriage. Obviously we got to have the moments where like, we're having sexual relations y'all. Okay. I think sex is something we don't talk about enough in this business. Y'all listen, keep their pocket full and their balls empty. Okay. I'm sorry for all the men on here. You can just say, amen. Don't, you know, it's fine. All right. And so that's really what my day is. You guys, I just, I find time to listen. Um, how to balance between a full-time job. I've never worked a full-time job and, uh, this business. So I apologize. Um, uh, but I've never worked a full-time job, Jason. I can't answer that. Neither has my husband while we've done this business, but, um, that's really kind of what my day, my week and my time looks like. I will, I will go 100% in this and I'm grateful. I have a husband who sees the vision. He's always seen the vision. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my husband. He's told me for years to do network marketing. That was like scam, 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 scam. And, um, so it's very conducive. We have a lot of communication. We have a lot of awkward conversations. Me and my husband do. We have a lot of, he had to step up and be Mr. Mom more than he prefers. We have a lot of Hey, if you're going to be on your phone all night, then you have to get over yourself and we're going to have to have sex in the sunlight. Like, I'm sorry guys, but these are real conversations you have to have. And I, I listen, I don't know a lot of other leaders that are just going to shoot straight like this, but these are conversations we still have to have. Like, Hey, it's been three days. What are we going to do? You know? And it's just, that's just part of this business. But I am grateful. Like I said, that, uh, me and my husband, we, you know, while like we're both words of affirmation or neither of us are quality time, but my husband is very high physical touch and I'm very negative 37% physical touch. So, uh, we just got to find ways to work that out. But what I will say is me and my husband, were very clear. We're both those reds. We're very direct with what our needs are. We're very direct. Um, we communicate a lot. He knows going into a promotion that it's going to get crazy. He knows that he knows like, okay, he's probably not going to see a lot of me from the 28th until the second of the month because we're doing all month end. And then the first of the month is getting all the communication out of the new promotion. So those like three to four days, mom's really off limits. Mom's not going out to eat. We're not taking vacations. Like I am 100% dedicated. So, um, so it's just a lot of communication. You have to communicate, even if your husband and you aren't on the same page or your wife and you aren't on the same page, you have to be able to communicate what's important to you. Hopefully your spouse respects you enough to like give you that space, but we have to meet in the middle. I love having a clean house. The rest of my family is extremely messy. So the compromise is I will not go without a clean kitchen. I can handle having a messy house, but I want my kitchen clean. So my husband makes sure at least the kitchen is clean every day. And I had to compromise. He had to compromise. So, um, I, I just kind of went off there. I'm sorry, but that's really like my life. If you guys just run a very transparent, we are a hot mess. We're still trying to figure out. We talk about stuff more than we want, but we're happy. We're happy. We need each other needs. <laughs> awesome. We're literally the same exact person. That just <laughs> describes like my whole entire life every day. So that's awesome. All right. Well, if no one has any more questions, thank you so much for getting on. This is amazing. Everyone needed to hear it. I'm very red as well and very straightforward. So most of them are probably used to this anyways. You just put the cherry on top. So thank you so much again. Congratulations again. Yes, you guys too. Congratulations. And listen, finish strong, you guys. Don't, don't think that you can't. There's nothing, I always tell people, there's nothing greater on the inside of me that's not on the inside of you. I, I have no... I am dead serious. Like, don't put any of us on a pedestal. We have no superpowers. I got, I sit in this chair with a lot of failure. I still fail. Uh, you know, a lot of, I'm not afraid to fail because I know I'm going to get back up. I'm not afraid to apologize or I'm not afraid to make mistakes because I'm not afraid to apologize to my team. I'm not afraid to say I called the wrong shot. They know if I lead them left, I will quickly turn around and go right. Like, 
But guys, there's lots of failures. There's lots of tears. There's lots of people quitting. I never thought six months ago that I would be here. Like I had, I was like, ambassador's never gonna happen. It's never gonna happen. It's never gonna happen. And if I'm honest with you, I'm sitting here right now and I'm like, I gotta do it all again, 2.0. It ain't never gonna happen. It's never gonna happen. It's, okay. Now I'm like challenging myself, but my brain says that stuff too. Okay, you guys see this like, I wanna annihilate and eat everybody's throats for dinner. And I do, I like to step on people's throats, but you can do this. If you quit, you'll never do it. But if you just keep one foot in front of the other, I promise you, you'll get there. So that's what I leave you. Don't ever quit. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much again. You are welcome, guys. Have a good night. We'll talk soon. Thank you.